I'm Amy of Dinesh Interiors. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me in my place. Um, it has been a little bit since I've been on here and I am so sorry. I really planned to keep up with the schedule, but I ended up getting sick and then I got a pimple that I wasn't ready to share with the world and then Christmas happened and now here we are. So New Year, uh, 2022. Let's hope it's better than the last couple. Um, I definitely plan on keeping up with a regular video schedule. I promise, I promise to try. So, over the holidays, we redid our kitchen. Uh, that'll be another video for another day, but with the kitchen redo came a whole bunch of new light fixtures. And once I did the kitchen light fixtures, I realized I wanted a new family room light fixture. So now we have this lovely thing that I can't get rid of. Um, we're just gonna have to deal with it. It's a beautiful 18 bulb Sputnik that is doing this. I will give you a little glance. Might need sunglasses. He's lovely, isn't he? The purpose of today's video is what I'm calling the after Christmas empties. So we all get rid of our stuff, our decor, our family, our friends, everything out the door. And then we kind of look around and we're like, oh, the house is so empty. And I got that feeling too, even though I know it's not empty, it's just a void of Christmas. But then I started seeing memes pop up on social media and it kind of made me laugh. And then it kind of made me think, you know, maybe I should do a video on this. How do you get rid of the after holiday empties? It's very easy. We just have to add back in the cozy. The problem is, it's still winter. We still want cozy. We still want full. We want to feel warm. We want to feel like everything's wrapping us up in this cozy little burrito. But when all of our stuff is back to normal, I'm not going to say empty because odds are what your house looks like now is actually what it looks like all year round. It just feels empty because it's missing the cozy. So I put everything back in my family room the way that I choose to do it for the month of January. February, not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna change it up another 10 times between now and then. It does drive my family crazy, but it's something that I tinker with all the time. Um, after I put it all back, I looked at it, I'm like, we're good, but I should make a video and let you know how to accomplish this in your house. So I'm gonna be wandering around, we're gonna have this light problem, you know, we'll see how this works. We'll work with it. Um, the first step, you want to empty your room. So this is the bare minimum. This is not what my house looks like all the time. This is void of everything except for furniture. There's a few things in here that I hate. I'm not a fan of the speakers for the surround sound and the subwoofer that my husband says that we have to keep despite the fact that we don't use. So that's something I need to work around. This couch is not my favorite. We have ordered a new one. However, it's gonna take 10 months to make, so you'll be seeing that sometime around Halloween. But this one still is nice. I'm happy with it. It's just not what I want permanently. So, your room's empty. First of all, you have to bring back your regular decor. My regular decor, I'm gonna go and let my cat out of the basement because she's freaking out. She's also my cat that eats all my house plants, so she might be going back. Speaking of house plants, that's the first thing. I like to have life in my house. I like to have greenery. I like it to feel fresh and summery because that's my favorite season. So I want life in my house. And I feel like in the winter, that's especially important because you need to feel like something out there is alive. You probably feel sluggish and like a homebody, you look outside and if you're in Canada, although we've been good this year, you're usually under three feet of snow and ice and there is not a leaf to be found. So plants are huge for me. That's my cat jumping up on everything. Um, and I'm gonna show you a few things with the plants too that I managed to find. Um, she's going back to the basement. This right here, super cute. A destroyer of all things beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna 
introduce you to the first plant. This guy, I believe, is called an umbrella plant. You don't really need to see that or you don't really care about that. However, the reason I'm showing you this is actually for the basket. So I have some really beautiful baskets in my home that I've got plants in, and they were expensive. They're... Welcome to the zoo. They were expensive baskets. I've got them at various different places. They're from various locations around the world. Um, I do love them. However, I find that the size of them is really large. This one here, I picked up at Dollarama. It was $4 and it's actually a garbage can. It's a very flimsy garbage can in my opinion, but it's listed as a garbage can. So sometimes it's great to think outside of the box, use things for purposes that they're not necessarily intended for. So I just drop the original plant, planter from the store, into this basket. The reason I don't transplant anything is because I'm a really, really crappy plant mom and usually when I touch things they die. So we're going to throw this guy up on the fireplace. Anyway, he's up there, he's nice and big, a nice big piece. The branches all kind of go to one way, not naturally, not because it's a great plant, just because I hacked a bunch of pieces off to try to propagate and it didn't work, but it worked out for the fireplace. Um, it's in a big basket. You want to put big things in first and then work around your little things. So one of the things that I'm dealing with is that subwoofer over there, super ugly, super chunky. I can't hide it. My husband's not ready to get rid of it. So we're going to use that as a little plant place as well. So I'm going to grab my snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue. Super easy plant. Don't need to water it. It's good. It just, it does its thing. It hasn't died. It's been three years. It's my favorite so far. Okay, and to hide the other speaker we have on the floor on the other corner, I'm gonna throw another plant in there. This one's in a stand, uh, mainly because the cats love to eat it. And I can put the stand in front of the speaker and it kind of hides it a little bit. And the last plant we're gonna do is somewhat new to me. Probably won't be here next time I do a video because I hear they're really finicky and like I said, I'm not good with them. But I've got a fiddle leaf fig. I dropped him into the same garbage pill basket as I did this guy. That way we've got a repetitive pattern. Your eye moves from one to the other. They're both large, they're impactful. They bring in that warm wood tone. The wood tones and the warmth is what brings it together. So when I say warm, I don't necessarily just mean blankets. You know, I don't necessarily just mean physical warmth. I'm also talking about visual warmth. So wood tones are warm. They remind us of, you know, times gone past, grandma's house, whatever. But they bring a cozy feeling. So matching baskets, wood tone. visual interest, your eyes go up and down and up and down over the planes and the heights. So the next thing is balance. I've got a bunch of high stuff. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of symmetry. It has its place in time. This house is not its place in time. Um, so I am going to put something else on the fireplace that's got some height, it's got some chunk, but it's not exactly symmetrical so it won't be a plant. I've got really large candle holders and big chunky pillars that are gonna go on that. So let me grab those. So as you can see, these guys are a good height. Um, they're white, so they match. The candles have the blue tones, so they match. I know it's really hard to see color right now because of this lighting, but there you go. Just because you have blue in a room doesn't mean that everything has to be the same color blue or the same color pink or the same color green. Play with the hues, play with the tones, because that's what's adding visual interest. These are a little more on the aqua or teal side. They still work. 
There's stuff like that in my carpet. I've got some pillows with this coloring. It works. So I'm gonna throw these on the opposite side of the fireplace. They're gonna go side by side. So that's it for the fireplace. It's done and I'll give you a close up of everything um, after. So next what I'm going to do is the coffee table. I like to have stuff on the coffee table. Some people look at it, some people don't. Um, I thumb through my books all the time, so I find that leaving them around, I'll just kind of sit wherever they are and go through them. Sometimes friends come over and they'll kind of thumb through them. My family, they don't touch them. So, just grab two books. It can be any type, um, coffee table books, hardcover books is what you want. So this one is a design book. Um, it's not my favorite design book, it just is what it is. This one I got myself for Christmas. It's a photography book about uh, my favorite music artist. So that one's definitely a favorite for the moment, especially because it has my favorite and photography incorporated into it. These guys are a nice, good, heavy weight. So they're going to anchor the coffee table. And I'm putting them off to the farther one side because I'm gonna put some stuff on them and I'm gonna put some stuff beside them. So coffee table I find is the one thing I tinker with a lot. I'm always looking for things to put on it. I'm always playing around with how things are sitting and the size and textures, everything like that. Um, I am looking for a coffee table tray, but I haven't found exactly what I want yet. However, the other day I was at, of all places, Walmart, and they had this really cute marble bathroom tray, and it's small. And I kind of looked at it and I was like, oh, I don't really need it, but it's cute. You know what? I'm going to grab it. So I grabbed it. I planned to actually throw it in the bin of all my staging stuff. Then I thought, hmm, it's small, but I could probably use it on top of the books. So I'll show you what I grabbed with that. Marbles and wood are great to mix together because they're both natural. And although marble and stone is what you would think of as a cold material, it's actually quite warm when you put it with wood. So this is the little tray just small, but it fits my marble and wood coasters, which also are from Walmart a few years ago, actually. So they go in there, but then I found this toothbrush holder, which had all this texture on it, and I thought it was adorable. I don't need it for a toothbrush holder. I have toothbrush holders, my children do, we're good. So I thought, oh, I'll put it in here and use it as a little vase. My plan was to put some actual pothos clippings in it, try to propagate those, but then my little destroyer of all things nice came along and tried to eat them. So, just fake succulent, plastic succulent, drop it in. So this guy is living right on top of my books here. I knew that I was looking for a vase. I knew exactly what I want. I searched Amazon high and low. I could not find it. Decided to go to HomeSense. Do I walk in? Is that not the third thing I see on the shelf? So this is the vase. It's a nice stone vase. Um, I like the lines on it. It's very Scandinavian, very minimalistic, but I like mixing styles. I like the rustic traditional. I like the Scandinavian. I like aspects of farmhouse. I just mix them all together. As long as you have some repetition in pattern and color, you can mix anything. So I got my vase, I think it was $20, perfect. Went out and cut some pine off the tree, it's a real branch, cats don't eat that, they don't like it. So I'm going to drop this beside the coffee table books on the coffee table. The one thing is I made sure that the vine big enough to curve off to the side so it didn't obstruct the TV when anybody's sitting there it hangs off completely in the different direction so that is my main decor that's the stuff that I would have pretty much year-round obviously not the pine I'm waiting for something from Amazon but it hasn't come yet so that's just doing its job for now now you want to add in the cozy the warmth the hug so there's a few different ways to do that one is lighting, one is texture. Um, we'll start with lighting first. 
I have a table lamp over here. I have a Scentsy over here that lights up. But we're also gonna add in candles. Anybody who knows me knows that I always, always, always have candles on. I love my candles. I have my two favorite scents. One is winter, one is not winter. They are on all the time. It's kind of, I guess, my house's signature smell. Candles make me feel at home. So, tons of them, so many. I could open a store. My tip for that is pick your scented candles, have that on. I would have, if you have multiple, have the same scent on on the same day. You don't wanna necessarily mix scents. And then have a bunch of unscented candles. So that way you still have that glow and the warmth of a nice candle going, but you're not competing scents. So a great option is these guys. So they're from Ikea. I wanna say maybe $2, something along those lines. They're just nice, white, good size, no smell. I'm gonna light that and I'm gonna drop it on my coasters. I literally have candles on all the time. Whether I'm by myself, whether people are coming over, it doesn't matter. There's always candlelight in this house. This guy, um, I believe was from Michael's. It was maybe $7 Aspen Pine. I don't like the labels, so I always turn them around. I'm gonna drop him over on the speaker by my one plant. And then this guy was uh, Home Sense and it's the Palo Santo wood smell. I actually really like the wood. I burn the wood a lot. This one was probably home scents and it was probably a little more 20, $25, something along those lines. So I'm gonna grab those, drop them over. Again, I always turn the labels of the candles to the inside because it becomes visual clutter. If your eyes are falling on the labels, they get focused there, they get stopped there, and it's just not pretty. So, lighting is done. We've got an overhead light, we've got a side light, we've got a Scentsy light, we've got candle light. Turn on a combination of those. Also, my overhead light's on a dimmer. It sets a mood. Next thing is your actual warm and cozies. So, pillows. I'm gonna throw some pillows out. So these guys are my big blue velvet pillows. Velvet, I actually keep these out year round, but velvet is a very warm, heavy material. So they are perfect for winter. These ones, um, I believe are probably from Walmart. However, if you go to Ikea, they have the velvet pillow covers for between five and $8, I think, and they can go over top. So if you wanna change the color of your pillows or texture of your pillows anytime, they're a great alternative because they're inexpensive and they're super easy to store. My closet upstairs is huge. It's the size of a small bedroom and it is full of pillows. So it's time to start buying the covers. So we're just gonna throw those. We're apparently working around the dog because she doesn't wanna move. So the blue ones are going on the couch. I have little accent ones that are gonna go with them. These guys are probably, I think, from my local garden center, actually, and they're just a plain paisley. They've got um, teal blue, aqua blue, navy blue in here, and a small hit of cobalt. So again, it brings all the blues together, it ties it together. Even though it's a different pattern, it's tying it all together. So these guys I throw in front of the velvet ones. These are also a linen, so they're a lot lighter. They stay out around the whole year as well. Um, but it just gives another texture to everything. I never ever karate chop pillows. I know that it is super controversial and I know that every designer on YouTube right now is probably rolling their eyes at me, but I despise the karate chop. I think it looks so fake, it looks so overdone, it looks so on purpose. I can't stand it. So there will never be a karate chopped pillow in my house ever, or a house I stage, or a house I design. We've got the couch pillows up. Now I'm gonna work on the side chair. For the winter only, 
I've got this little faux fur here. Um, probably Ikea, maybe HomeSense or Winners or one of those. So this is my side chair. All I'm gonna do, pull it out a bit. Just lay it over. So it kind of acts a little bit like a blanket, but you're never gonna use it as one. We'll take care of that, don't worry. This is my fur pillow. This is actually a real fur. I forget what it is. It was a splurge. It was definitely a splurge, but I love it. I do actually put it in the laundry. It just came out today and it kind of recurled. It's really hard to see, but it kind of recurled some of the fur on here, but it's so fluffy. It's so warm. I keep it year round just because I do love it. I just move it to a billion different places throughout the year. So that's gonna go on here. It is cozy. Now, beside this, we're going to add a basket of blankets and pillows. So that way, when guests come, so that way when guests come, they don't need to feel that they need to ask you for a blanket or tell you that they're cold because that can be awkward. It's there in a basket. They can grab whatever they need, whenever they need it. No problem, it's there at their fingertips. I have one more pillow that I'm gonna add to this because as you can see, the white on the white, it's not my favorite. Um, they are a little bit different tones of white, but it's not looking great. So we're gonna break that up. I've got these little lumbar pillows. They're actually a teal color. Not that you can see that right now, but they are teal, so they pick up from my carpet. They pick up from those other Paisley pillows I showed you. We're just going to insert this behind. And you can see maybe the color a little bit better now, but you can see how it just kind of breaks it up. So that is a way you're adding another texture another pillow which is cozy in itself and it gives your eye a place to stop and rest. So blankets, I love blankets. I have a closet full of pillows but I also have a closet full of blankets. Every color, every texture, every everything, I love blankets. For the purpose of this video I'm just going to use this chair that you can see. The one that's out of frame is usually where this would go but um, I'm not going to move the camera around a bunch more. So this blanket has a nice little fringe at the bottom. It's slightly off-white. It is a really nice blanket. It was also a fairly inexpensive blanket. I wanna say this could have been Ikea. So, again, I normally put it on another chair, but this one is in frame for the time being, so we're gonna use it. And it just goes over the arm like that. That way, when people are cuddled up, they're sitting, chatting, having a glass of wine, whatever they're doing at your house, they can just grab it right off the edge, curl up with it. People do it and they don't even realize they're doing it. That's how comfortable and inviting it is. My last blanket, this one was a splurge also. You can't see it perfectly, but it is so soft, so big. It was from um, Indigo. It is a warm blanket, but in the summer I actually use it to nap outside because it doesn't get too hot. It's the weirdest thing. This one I like to always have around and accessible. So this one goes on the arm of the couch. Same idea. It's right there. It's accessible for your guests. They grab it. They don't even know they're grabbing it. Now, because I love blankets, don't think that two blankets is enough in one room. I'm talking year round. There's always many, many, many blankets in my house. Blankets and candles. I have a ladder with the blankets on it, so I'm gonna grab that. So my TV stand is a mess. That's the next thing to get cleaned up and the bookshelves on there I need to get organized. But I'll grab my blanket ladder. So this is the blanket ladder. Full disclosure, I hate this ladder. I hate everything about it. Um, 10 years ago when I was looking for a blanket ladder, maybe 15 years ago, they weren't actually a thing. 
so it was super hard to find. I went into a store one day, they had this bamboo one. I was like, eh, don't like it, not my style, but it's a ladder, I'm buying it anyway. My plan was to stain it dark. My plan was to replace it. Here we are 10 to 15 years later and I'm still using it. It is what it is. I've got three blankets on here, a teal one that matches the pillows, a shimmery mid-tone blue, and a pure white. So again, they all fit in with the skein, but they're all a different texture. We've got a knitted, a chenille, and a big and fluffy. So that goes over here. Part of the reason that that's its home is because it just sort of adds height to match our cupboard over here. My last blanket is one of my favorites, but it's also one of my son's favorites. It's very well used. It came from, I believe, Costco. It is blue, but it's ombre. So it brings in all the colors that I have in this room. And this one, like I said, I don't like the karate chop. I don't necessarily also like the rigid placed look. So yes, I have stuff folded over, and yes, I've placed my pillows, but I don't want it to look like I've done it on purpose. So this blanket just kind of gets tossed. We're tossing it over the dog right now. But it gets tossed just to show people, hey, we do actually live here. It's not a model home. We live here, we lay on the couch, we sleep on the couch, our pets are on the couch. We use the things in our house. Yes, I like them to be in their place, but yeah, we use them. We use them all the time. So let me give you a close up. And that's how you fix the after Christmas empties. Super easy. Just remember, live stuff, cozy stuff, textured stuff, lighting, and layer. You can do it with whatever you've got at home. There's no need to spend a penny. Thank you so much for popping into my channel. And remember, like and subscribe if you like what you see, if you want more content. I definitely would love to do more of this in 2022. Drop a comment below, let me know if there's something you want me to fix about the style of the video, if there's something you want to see, any comments you have. Even feel free to jump over to my Facebook page and drop some pictures of your place and what you did to make it look cozy. Or jump over to Instagram and tag me in any of your home decor, design, coziness. Whatever you've got on there, feel free to tag me in and let me see what you're working on. You can find me on social media at Danash Interiors. D-A-N-A-S-H Interiors. Thanks so much. Bye.